Hello loves, this is M. Rain, and today we're going to talk about mysticism and business. We're putting them together in this video, okay, for a very specific reason, in fact. So, since I have been a mentor and I have been um, CEO of a spiritual business, I have attracted all sorts to me, right? Some people come to me because they want to do apprenticeship and they want to study mysticism. They want to understand how to tap into their inner abilities. They want to heal their body. They want to do the spiritual journey. And then there are other people who come to me because they see the success and they want to build their business and they want to be wealthier at the very least. And so um, oftentimes the majority of the businesses that I've had a hand in helping other people to create have been spiritual. But today I want to challenge you guys about something, right? So just because you are a spiritual person doesn't mean that you have to start a spiritual business. It doesn't even mean that you have to start a business, okay? However, I encourage everyone to have a business or at the very least some kind of independent income because this world you don't know what's coming from one day to the next and you need some parts of your income not to be dependent on somebody else being able to make their business work. I do want you guys to understand that, that when you have a job, your job is dependent on the people who own the company to make their business work every day, every week, every month, every year, right? And people do it all the time. I mean, Walmart have been around since before I was born, I believe, or Oh, as long as I can remember for sure. And, um, you know, Exxon and BP and there's a lot of businesses that last way beyond the lifespan of the people who started it. And Walmart is a perfect example of that. Um, even so, it's so important that we realize that in these economic times that we're in right now, change is happening quickly. There are different laws, different um, belief systems now that, that operate amongst those that are CEOs and, and those that are employees. And so it's important that you don't have, that you do have options and that you don't have all your eggs in one basket, okay? So when it comes to creating additional income, and the reason why I generally tell people to go on and organize it as a business is because you don't want to miss the tax write-offs, right? So if I just got a side hustle and I don't really have it organized, there are certain things that I can write off, sure. But if I have it organized as a business, whatever my side hustle is, while there are certain fees, after you organize, the majority of the fees are small. The annual fees, they're small. Um, but if you have it organized, now all of a sudden, parts of your living space, the cost of operating that becomes a tax deduction, how you drive parts of your cell phone bill, different things become tax deductions. I'm not going to go into all of that, right? Um, that'll make this a very long video. So it's important that you look at your options and you know your options. Now, let me talk about this. So magic works with business hand in hand, hand in hand. And part of it is because magic is about energy manipulation or moving energy. Now, if you don't want to call it magic, you don't have to because everybody does energy manipulation. Breathing in and out is transmutation and energy manipulation at its finest, right? You are breathing in oxygen. You are releasing carbon dioxide, okay? So one thing is going in, something else is coming out. Because your body is in an exchange with the world around it. Having said that, <laughs> magic helps you to focus your energy on that which is important. It doesn't have to be a spiritual business. You don't have to be a reader to use magic to increase your business. I use magic to increase my business with, with real estate. I use magic to increase my business with publishing. I use magic to increase my business being a talent manager. So even though, yeah, magical mystic, yes, I built that off magic. However, I use magic all around the board. You don't want to talk about it. You don't have to. You don't have to tell anybody what you're doing. That's not important. And what you're doing, by the way, is not wrong. It is smart. It is wise. It is giving you a great opportunity to increase 
the power of what you're doing, the speed. When I see people who get into magic and they automatically, you know, because I do this, this thing called chakra of, of, of wealth reading. And that's when I look at your energy and I tell you where I see money potential because it reads a certain kind of way. Right. So I tell them, OK, your heart is very full of, of this this wealth energy. Right. That doesn't mean you got to be a healer per se is as far as doing Reiki and you know, acupuncture. If you're interested in that, great. But don't think that that's where you're limited to because on the other hand, being heart-centered for money could be opening homes to help those who have been battered and abused, opening centers to help those who are illiterate or technologically illiterate or challenged, right? To help those who have had drug problems. It's so many different things that come from the heart. And for that matter, your heart may be all beauty and, and colors and vibrancy. And so when you see when there's money energy in your heart space and your heart is full of vibrancy, then maybe you should be painting or doing poetry or photography or, you know, so you have to know yourself. And you have to be true to yourself. Being spiritual does not mean you have to betray yourself and try to become somebody that you're not. This is who I've always been. I have always been the person that people talk to about their problems. I have always, always, always been the person who have better advice for other people sometimes than I have for myself. You know, that changed as I become self-aware in spirituality. But even before, when I was young and in the, in the middle of mess, I could give other people great advice. So that's just, that's a, a part of my nature. Um, I invest in people. I invest emotionally, financially, and time. And so this made sense. This is true for me. That don't mean it has to be true for you. But on the other hand, if you do decide to start a spiritual business because that's what's really for you, then understand, even if it doesn't feel easy to build, that this is what's in you. This is what's for you. And so you commit to it because it's a part of you, not because you're waiting on it to take off and make millions. When I started Magical Mystic, I had no clue. It's a very niche market. <laughs> it's occultism and metaphysics. And, you know, and so uh, we live in a predominantly Christian country. Even when people are not Christian, they still have Christian type belief systems. So I had no idea it would become a multi-million dollar um, business. I had no way to, you know, somewhere inside of me, I think I always would wanted it to. I wanted any of my businesses to do it. Um, the shocker that it was magical mystic to me was just proof that magic really works and that your spirit team is really, really dynamic and able to hear you and help you in your daily life. And then lastly, I want to say this to you guys, right? So if something is hard while you're doing magic, stopping magic is not going to make it easier. However hard it may feel to you while you're doing your candle work and your affirmations and your mantras and your grounding and you're working with trees and you're giving, offering and pouring libation and saying um, your chants to the ancestors and singing and dancing and honoring them. If you stop that, you know what I'm saying? It's only going to get harder, right? So when you're pushing energy, you're getting it the easiest you're ever going to get it. I am doing my due diligence and I'm pushing energy. I got it covered, right? And sometimes people in doing their due diligence fall away. And I have slowed down several times in my life. I've never stopped. I've never been completely inconsistent. There will always be something going on in my life. But there have been times where the due diligence took so much energy that I kind of started slipping a little bit and immediately I felt the re results of it the immediately okay magic is not something you do hocus pocus boof bam pow and then I'm done it doesn't work like that I mean you can do something to help you through a situation and it works but that's being very short-sighted because another situation is coming right around the bend you can believe that. <laughs> okay. So guys, this has been my, my mini little conversation about spirituality and business, and they don't have to be the same. 
Um, but you are a spirit, okay? And you manipulate energy already. You are already manifesting. You were born doing it, okay? So why not do it with wisdom, knowledge, and direction? That's my point. So if you don't mind, guys, definitely be sure to subscribe, follow, like, across all the platforms, Instagram, X, um, TikTok, Twitter. Well, not Twitter no more. That, that's X. Y'all, it's terrible. It's so many sites now. It's Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok. Oh, and YouTube. I knew I was forgetting something. So like and follow and, and share me on all those platforms. Be sure to hit the notification bell on YouTube. You don't want to miss a video. Look us up online, magicalmystic.com, M-A-G-I-C-K-A-L, mystic.com, or for classes, divinityacademy.com. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.